this wraps up today with this. Christ is born. Maybe that's a good place to start. That's glorify him. That's the response. Christ is born. Glorify him. In my emails and my communication with you, I shared with you the greetings of his beatitude, Patriarch John, uh, his eminence, uh, Metropolitan Antonios, he's the Metropolitan of Sahli and the Vicar of the Patriarch here in North America. And I shared with you also the greeting of His Grace Bishop Alexander, our local bishop. And I want to read his letter. I would like to read all of their letters, but some of them are quite long. And but I want to read. Bishop Alexander's letter because it's the one I am uh, relatively basing my sermon on, along with the Gospel and the Epistle reading. Beloved clergy and faithful of our Diocese of Ottawa, Eastern Canada and Upstate New York, greetings in this blessed season of the Nativity of Christ. I share with you an excerpt from a hymn by St. Ephraim the Syrian. The hymn goes, in this day of pardoning, let us not extract trespasses. In this day of gladness, let us not spread sadness. In this day so sweet, let us not be harsh. In this day of peaceful rest, let us not be wrathful in it. In this day when God came to sinners, let not the righteous be in his mind uplifted over sinners. In this day in which there came the Lord of all unto the servants, let masters too condescend to their servants lovingly. In this day in which the rich, the rich became poor for our sake, let the rich make the poor man share with him at his table. On this day to us came forth the gift, although we asked it not, let us therefore bestow alms on them that cry and beg of us. This is a hymn of St. Ephraim the Syrian. And then his grace continues, On this joyous feast day, I greet you with a holy kiss, and wish you, your families and your loved ones, far and near, a blessed nativity and a healthy and spiritually enriching new year. Please remember all those who suffer from violence, whether here or at home or elsewhere around the world. Pray that the light of Christ may shine a path of repentance and holiness for each one of us, so that by our healing the world can also be healed and hence become a better place for all of humanity. I really enjoyed his letter because it tells us both about what Christ did and our response. Because we, we rightly spend a lot of time, probably should spend a lot more time, in wonder and awe at what God has done, at the fact that God became one of us, and he became one of us to make us of him, of his. That's what we say. We say he came and he adopted us, as we heard in the epistle to the Galatians. That's what he did. And that's what is important because it's not only about how we position ourselves, although it is partly about that. But it's how He fundamentally changed our nature. It's what we mean what we, when we say that He came and took our nature to heal it, that He became man, that man can become God, that He took what is from us so that we can get what is from His. And that's where our part comes in. That's what His grace 
It's talking about pray that the Lord will shine a path of repentance and holiness in our lives. We what does it mean that the Lord presented himself to us as a babe in a manger? That he is humble, that he's meek, that he's gentle, that he is long suffering, that he possesses all those qualities of sacrifice, always giving of himself that he is true and just and merciful, slow to anger, that he judges with mercy and truth and not with a passionate judgment, that he has condescended to be with us. What does it all mean if it's not for us to become that way? To become by grace that way because we can try, we can try as hard as we want. And if it wasn't for Him becoming incarnate, we would never be able to try. The Greek Fathers have a word that summarizes all of these, all of these characteristics of God, if you want to say. And they use the word synkatabasis, we often translate it as condescension. I really don't like that translation and really it's very hard to translate it and really at the time of Pascha we also translate that same word as long-suffering. It is his willingness. It's not condescension in the word and because it's Condescension is so related to the word condescending, and he does not relate to us this way. In his gentleness, he condescends in that he accepts to willingly be bound by our limits, the limits of our nature, in order to heal this nature. That's been the object of wonder, of fathers and what fills our services, how we have been prepared to celebrate today. It is the same quality that we end up seeing in God's saints, precisely because He has made this possible. And so we see, for example, we see Saint Joseph when he is presented with this pregnant woman and he withholds his judgment from her. We see it in the life of the Theotokos throughout her life, her humility. One of the readings, I believe that's the reading that we read yesterday, she kept all those things in her heart. Her humility. If there is one quality, really, one quality that summarizes the characteristics of God, it's humility and how far we are from this. Maybe, maybe, perhaps one way that we can hope to acquire it is by making sure that we do not leave any part of us, any part of our life that is not united to Him. And one of the fathers, St. Gregory the Great, he's, he was a bishop of a city in Nazianzus. It's one of his famous quotes is, what is not assumed is not healed, but that which has been united to His divinity is saved. And he's of course speaking in the context of, you know, people who were not willing to to say that Christ was fully man. He's saying that if you were not fully man, then our humanity cannot be healed. But that which has been united to his divinity has
has been saved. Maybe this is where we can make sure that we do not leave a part of our life, a part of our being that is not united to Him. We do not withhold anything from Him. Maybe, perhaps, I don't know, but maybe that's what it would take us to begin to acquire humility. And so we pray exactly for what His grace has asked us to pray, that the light of Christ may shine a path of repentance and holiness for each one of us, so that by our